Uh, welcoming. Uh, okay. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are going to uh, discuss um, how we are going to do, uh, how we are going to um, proceed with uh, a new version of our data sets, V12. It will be. Uh, it's I think already something like fifty thousand uh, articles or papers. And we want to have them uh, in the format that is already um, developed, uh, employed by, by Brandon in V8, V9. And uh, mainly it's just a data frame with all possible uh, enrichments uh, that are provided by, uh, um, by a science space model, large model plus uh, annotation enrichments from uh, uh, Allen uh, Institute for Artificial Intelligence. And uh, my idea is, uh, roughly speaking, that we are going to have three versions of it, of, 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 of that data frame, namely for sentences, sections, paragraphs, and, and entire documents. And three persons of us, namely, I already asked Mary, Dylan, and Alex for that, and they all preliminarily agreed on that, uh, that the, uh, each of them uh, will prepare uh, one data frame. Um, having everything that uh, Brandon, I mean, having in terms of form, everything that uh, already uh, Brandon did. So um, do you have uh, questions for that, at least now? Yeah, I've got a question for the uh, document vectors that you were mentioning. Yeah. So, because um, I know that uh, my team would study design, we would d love to have like a proper document vectors. Okay. Um, uh, are you guys going to just use Spectre or? No, it's we are going just to uh, put the, uh, there um, those uh, dog vectors that we uh, get from uh, spacey models. Just, just that's all. I mean. At least now we are not going to prepare any special embedding or document or sentence or uh, paragraph embeddings at all. We just uh, put in the data frame that what we have from uh, from the model. So let's say a default embedding that was used by Brandon, but for now for V12 data set, so at least now. And what about like which kind of uh, uh, vectors we are going to use for uh, elastic search, semantic search, etc. later on, we can discuss later on because now it's like out of the scope of this discussion because first we need just this data frame like like prepared by Brandon and embeddings is something that we can expand later on. How does it sound to you, Imran? Yeah, that's fine. Um, just the vectors is probably like something that I would be interested in, but yeah, yeah sure. I mean, like later. everyone is interested in, but like first we need to have this basic version. I mean, like uh, everything with lemmas, uh, entity recognition, and things like that. And then uh, vectors is like kind of different story. I mean, like uh, the vectors that we were going to uh, to produce in this, let's say, sprint is uh, just uh, the basic vectors that uh, as provided also by Brandon. Uh, and uh, Imran, I have a question. And you just said uh, there's another team that you are leading. Is it partly consistent of people from search engine or another one? Um, I don't think they're not really active in search engine. So you could uh, probably put it under metadata extraction to extract study design types. That's it. And label them all the papers with study designs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it will be kind of uh, cross task collaboration. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so maybe there are some questions about data frame. I, mean, I don't I mean technical question because now it's quite difficult like to explain. I mean, you know what the data pandas data frame is, but uh, it will be much easier to, to see that on, on in this discussion on Slack. My proposal is that uh, we are going to work with a Trello board that uh, is already activated. Uh, we, we will have also, I mean, we have all our uh, GitHub's uh, accounts so we can share the code. Uh, and the idea is also because we have, let's say, three persons working on three different, uh, like three notebooks that cover some of the parts of the notebook will be similar. 
so don't be afraid to like to copy from each other or to support it to each uh, each other so that uh, and document everything and uh, lucas yes L lucas um i have a suggestion yep uh the problem with uh notebook that brandon created and basically this complete pipeline uh he does processing of all stuff and uh it can generate like 25 gigabytes of yes I, I i so, thought about it i thought about it because yeah, you mentioned wait, that. wait 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 so uh my idea actually to split uh, in parts so it would be nice to create kind of sample and not to process like 59 or how much yeah uh, it's something but uh, like like 100 or 500 let's see and just to do processing uh, kind of testing, to create testing test data set, and after to scale it up. Okay. Because now you, you can actually have all these kind of uh, problems. And I saw server that uh, Brandon is using, so it has, I think like 12 uh, cores and uh, 128 gigabytes of RAM. And I don't think you can actually get it quickly <laughs> okay i mean yeah, that, yeah that's our, that's the question that i i want to also have some help to maybe not discuss in detail because it's impossible now but like just to mark okay that that is something big before us yes. namely uh the first question is uh, my suggestion also so uh, anything you develop in your uh in your jupiters is like take the first 100 documents uh, looks how it works nicely so that the whole pipeline has a beginning and the end uh, and then uh, are the two solutions then we can uh, talk about uh, how to scale and another question uh, another like a proposal suggestion is uh, you can put it in a um, uh, in, in a docker or I have already some dockers uh, and I can run this on let's say on a uh, on a thing that I have my job and uh, there's a, a plenty of uh, CPUs there. And we can do it like in one hour or two hours because I already did four sections with V8. And it was for me like uh, one hour, one and a half hour, something like that. Uh, so uh, once I have the notebook, I can run this on, on, on my, uh, let's say, cluster and then copy to the, the results I can copy, uh, send to uh, to the VM on to database, etc. So there's a, one suggestion. Another suggestion is the, as uh, stated by, as proposed by, by Slava, let's prepare this basic version of no, no, like the whole notebook, but with, with just a small amount of data and now let's think how we can scale this on our virtual machine so two ways to tackle uh, so, so to basically way. basically if you already have uh, docker support in, in your operating system uh, you can just uh, scale by adding new docker containers yeah yeah it's I also mean, open yeah i mean if it's just uh, jupyter notebook with, uh, with the links to the data for, uh, to download them it's it's no problem for me. I mean, like, just because it's like my no own notebook, as it mm -hmm. would be. So, yeah, uh, there are questions about this, like generic question. Yeah, uh, so in other words, what we're doing is we, we split the coding, like the coding of the processing pipeline and actual execution of that pipeline, right? Yes. Is, so so that, right uh, now, the, the goal for people, again, not to compute all of those vectors right but just create the pipeline that works and again to in order to do this you do like a sample of a data set so you run it cover like essentially you do testing right it passes everything okay now it's a pipeline you can package in a docker and again don't focus on docker right now for people who are like right now playing with jupyter notebooks that will be like second step and it's like maybe separate set of people will be doing that and then after that point when you have docker contain you know images you you again you you execute and then compute it fast for example like if, if lucas is, is willing to run that yeah uh, thing. or and slightly slower on our google cloud yeah i mean like this yeah. the most important uh to uh to provide also documentation like every almost every line whatever you do just to comment because it, this code will be you reused and seen by many people and then it's quite difficult if you have your own style of naming variables etc it's fine for you when you work just for 
for yourself and uh, mm -hmm. and otherwise actually yes. just to, to add what 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 Lucas is saying like right now the step one the goal is again not to rush as quickly as possible as what Brandon was doing before but to actually create this well documented pipeline so next time the version v13 shows up in a couple of days again we we do only a couple of changes and again it will be some other person will be doing it mm -hmm. and uh, just from my point of view from infrastructure i would be interested in in actually having one process that can do uh, extraction of all entities and uh, other recognition things for one document because uh, we are almost finished with annotation tool and uh, I assume that people will bring their own articles about COVID-19 and it would be nice also to get it from hypothesis and do the same processing by uh, running our pip pipeline okay. and we'll get like one annotation that will be created by human and second annotation created by artificial intelligence. So yeah. I really need to have kind of repeatable process that can do that. Okay. So to, to, to clarify this point. If like, again, we're launching this hypothesis uh, browser extension, some user will, again, kind of, let's say, find uh, an article, creates annotations, right? We will see this on our backend that, oh, another document was added to annotation pool. And then we, we need to take the document, grab it from whatever, where that user kind of annotated it there add it to our data pool and again run this pipeline of processing the, uh, of annotating creating all of the embeddings yada yada whatever we do we should have this uh, kind of like like a function lambda function of some sort right to set up a microservice that will just take the document go through it and you know create okay. like, like machine generated stuff so just to scale down um uh, there, there will be a Trello board. Uh, I need to, uh, just uh, give me your email addresses because I don't have all email addresses, all of you, so that I can invite you to Trello and to so and on uh, and GitHub, and because so that you have also access to to uh, our GitHub account. Yes. Okay. So for GitHub, we already have a GitHub team for search engine. I think majority of people are already in there. Um, but, but that, if you are not, you yeah. haven't done it before, again, just post it on Slack. Here is my GitHub. Here is my email address for Trello board. Just to make sure we, we, we don't we lose have, anybody yeah, yeah. there. Exactly. That's the if somebody is not in, uh, it, uh, he she should be already. Uh, okay, that's uh, I mean like this organizational, but very important so that we don't uh, lose anyone here and uh, last, okay in terms of because there are plenty of questions about elastic search semantic search uh, for v12 i think that we can uh, have this discussion about it uh, like next time in the sense that w once we have data data frame of all sorts we can uh, start uh, working on elastic search and discussion on elastic search can we can have uh, like over tomorrow in this week uh, at the weekend uh, because I don't think we can start now the whole d dispute about elastic search how we fit uh, vectors into elastic search or do we have an, another uh, like tool for semantic search like face or annoy uh, I think it will be a, a long discussion and uh, with many technical details hey guys can, can I ask a quick question and sure. I'll jump off? Yeah, uh, yeah. So not to get too much into technicalities, but I really, uh, I really believe that we need to start like presenting like the actual interfaces and I'm willing to, to lead that kind of direction. But from your standpoint, in terms of search engine, I just need some API, some interface that will, will be you know, unchangeable, right? something that will stay the same even if you will change the implementation of the underlying architecture. Uh, is it possible to get such API request example? Yeah, uh, so basically we can use open API. It's a former Swagger specification. Okay, and sec perfect. second option is uh, to use just, just GraphQL. Okay. And we, can, we can someone send me the example for uh, querying uh, search? Yeah. 
Okay, perfect. That's it. Let, let, let's stick to GraphQL. I think it will be better for all of the web. No, uh, no? I think we can support both because uh, we have people coming from different worlds. REST and... API would be easier based on my experience. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's, we, we can start with Open API and after we can move with uh, GraphQL because sometimes it can be seen as complicated <laughs> to, to query yes. something. Yeah, but I mean, like with GraphQL, right, it'll be much easier. Again, since we have this zoo of, of different services, right? Yeah, but I'm going to tell you the, the first web developer I'm I on board, he'll be confused uh -huh. about GraphQL. I also think so. Okay. Well, again, again, my, my rule number one is always the team who actually implements the sites, right? If, if on, on those end, like the people are more, I mean, before okay. GraphQL. I'll, I'll jump off revolution. and I'll wait for example yeah, from let, let, the yeah, Kuro or that. Swagger or something. All right. Yeah, Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay, there are still questions about like organizational about how we proceed with uh, V12 uh, data frame. Uh, Lucas, I have one uh, idea. Yeah. Uh, so basically, in V9, uh, we already have it uh, in Elastic. So what we can do actually to recognize all uh, documents that not indexed in V9, and we can create this subset. And why actually we we should uh, reindex everything? from scratch. We can just add some missing information. Okay. Okay. Because and I believe in V9, we have like 55,000 and uh, V12, it will be 59. So okay. who cares for, for 4,000 yeah, documents? Yeah, there's another question about those vectors that it was already asked by Imran because you have vectors from different models and it's uh, it may be crap. I mean, like it's of course it's a mess a bit. Yeah. Uh, and because like we can also have elastic search like elastic search without those vectors and then just by using for instance uh, let's say uh, another let's say semantic search tool like face or annoy whatever we have mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, but then once again we have we need those vectors so uh, I think that the whole discussion about vectors would be uh, the, the like to have the basic type of vector like this produced by Spacey and then a couple of different vectors coming from different models and then we can pick up the best one we, we would put into uh, into Elasticsearch because as my understanding is that the putting vectors into Elasticsearch is that it requires time and uh, it's problematic yeah that's it's not or, problematic it's just uh, difficult to read <laughs> Pickles uh, with five and or ten gigabytes into RAM. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. So in this sense, it's difficult. I mean, like it's a uh, wa waste of resource, not waste, but it's it, it's high demand of resources. And yeah. So, so uh, last time when we did it together with uh, Brandon, I think he created like five hundred uh, files. Separate JSON files and uh, okay, no, yeah, I see the point. I mean, like uh, maybe it's, it would be better just to have a elastic search, like elastic search and vectors. We can like uh, those those vector searches, like semantic search searches, uh, searches tool. We built a part and uh, somewhere else, let's say, and then uh, we upload the the ready in indices. Uh, we will see. I mean, it's something we we can talk about later. It's not, okay. not something that we need to solve tonight. Uh, I think it can wait. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. What is the day? Should be solved yesterday. Ah, yeah, should be solved. Yesterday. Because people already complained. <laughs> ah, yeah. so, they can complain. I mean, like, freedom of speech. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, still some questions about, uh, like, in terms of organization, like, the, the technical stuff, I, I think the best way is to discuss on, on Slack because. Uh, 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 I have a yeah. question yeah. for Kevin. I think he's on the call, and uh, I definitely see value in in yeah in in uh, uh, no notebook that he already created. And uh, he, uh, can he, can he actually write some documentation and uh, publish this notebook uh, in our dataverse? Because it's a new kind of new thing, new direction that every notebook that has uh, some value should be published and shared with all people. And you will have a link uh, in metadata also to run it. 
in Google Colab. So it would be nice to make it clear for all people that uh, what Kevin already created and probably we can optimize some things and also to reuse in other notebooks. Yeah, so I'm updating my code because I think you sent that a uh, whole uh, reading JSON file through Dataverse online thing earlier today. And so I, I'm adding that to my code currently. Um, uh, the only issue is that my pipeline requires a very large file from NIH. Um, I essentially using its meta thesaurus and that takes up five gigs and you have to, um, because it has dozens upon dozens of, of data dictionaries, but you have to, uh, up, like, you have to input it. And so that takes like, I think maybe 10, 20 minutes and you need to have it like on, I'm not sure if you can put it on Dataverse and people can just download it, but then downloading it from Dataverse would require time. Uh, and so I'm not sure how exactly that would work in terms of if you want to use it just because it is a sink in resources that, um, not sure how that's gonna go in terms of just mm. overall. Okay, uh, I can explain yeah. you what, what I want. Uh, I do yeah, want yeah. To, run, yeah. to run uh, your process, your pipeline on complete collection. It makes no sense. What actually uh -huh. I want from you, just to query uh, mm -hmm. Elastic on some specific keyword. You can choose, uh -huh. I don't know, hard disease or yeah. whatever. And um, after you, you, you can turn it uh, to JSON this uh, mm -hmm. module called Pandestic, I think. So there mm -hmm. is possibility to create data frame directly from Elastic, from, from mm -hmm. JSON coming from Elastic, and just run your process on like limited collection with, mm -hmm. I don't know, 500 records. That's mm -hmm. enough for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh -huh. What do you think? That should be fine. I mean, my code currently, like, it, like the at least the new code runs uh, the conversion to the different ontologies um, pretty easily. It's just the whole the straight upfront UMLS uh, mm -hmm. initialization takes a long time. Or yeah. Not it's, it takes some time. Yeah, that so, should be fine. Uh, yeah. So this is fine. We we need to optimize it a little bit and uh, also mm -hmm. to show people that there are different options actually how they can run this pipeline. Okay, so uh, because the, uh, if I understand you correct, I mean, like if I feel correctly, there is no more questions in terms of a V12 pipeline preparation, in terms of organization, of course. No, I'm good. I'm I'm happy to pick up part of that, and I'll uh, I'll have time to work on it tomorrow, and I'll reach yes. out to your slot if I have any specific questions I run into. I mean, like, like, take it easy. It's not something to, to rush in 24 hours. Like, if we, when we start uh, working already in this week, so that we have some Jupyter, ver Jupyter Notebooks versions this week, uh, it's, it's fine. And uh, even next week, that, so that would maybe at the end of the next week, when we have those, those uh, notebooks, maybe not, not the whole data sets run, but uh, notebook pipeline, pipe, like notebooks pipeline, uh, from A to Z, uh, ready to process the whole uh, uh, functioning, ready to process the whole uh, data set, that's fine. I mean, it's the most important thing is that w we have some uh, organizational culture and we can, uh, we have, so that we can coordinate a couple of persons doing different things over a longer period of time so that you stay with us uh, like, next week next month something like that uh yeah yeah glad i got something meaningful to help out on so yeah 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 cool i'll let you guys, i'll let you, I'll, I'll reach out tomorrow if i have any questions yeah perfect uh mary do you have any questions mary <laughs> okay uh can you hear me yeah now oh okay great nope no questions for me okay cool Thank you. So uh, I think that uh, we can uh, close this session. I mean, uh, thank you very much for, for very, I'm giving, I think, productive uh, discussion. And uh, any further questions, demands, suggestions, proposal, wishes, dreams on Slack? Uh, I think that would be the best way. Okay, uh, so have a good night, good day, good evening, good morning, whatever, depending on your. Uh, time zone and yeah and it, it was pleasure to talk with you i mean like it's a great talk i think
So have uh, see you next time on Thursday. Okay. Thursday, yeah.